Sometimes I relate to dads way more than moms. Obviously, I'm not a mom. But the reason why I say this is th there's a couple reasons. But, okay, first of all, look where I am. <laughs> Babysitting um, my nephew and niece in the Alps. This is where they live. <laughs> but the reason why <clears throat> I like talking about um, my struggle with, like, toxic masculinity or whatever. Or whatever. Is because... I had to work really hard to not act like a man in so many ways. <laughs> and I was able to change because I had the will to change, the desire to change, and I've done the work to change. And so by that, I mean, let me just give you an example. So we're uh, babysitting niece and nephew. Uh, one is six <clears throat> and one is almost three. And, you know, I can speak French, but not like amazing French and you know sometimes children are easier to, to listen to and then sometimes they're harder because they're you know talking to a two-year-old in French is you know like his name is Mose and his name is Moshe uh but anyway just trying to it's like it's like learning like an extension of the language um but because there's this barrier between connection Especially with me and the older one, you know, who obviously speaks fluently at his age, uh, unlike a two-year-old. It's like the older he gets, the more I feel a separation because language is more important in our interactions. Whereas like last summer, for instance, you know, Anthony, my husband, if you're new here, um, he would, when we were babysitting, he would do, he would be hands-on with my nephew because you know, they have more complicated conversations and he just needed more. And so I played, you know, with the, the two-year-olds because, you know, we're not talking. We're just speaking play, right? And so that was easy. But now, you know, she talks way more. So I'm feeling like a little bit more and more distance because the language becomes more and more important with these interactions. Even though what I love about kids is that you don't even have to speak the same language kids kids can talk to each other without even speaking the same language because they just get around it they adapt and they don't have like all this fear and shame <laughs> and their old stories and maybe even some trauma responses or whatever from like their childhood playing in because they're like in their childhood anyway uh, my relationship with language seriously especially with someone with serious adhd it is like one of the biggest sources of my shame is is learning another language. This is like the hardest thing I've ever done. And if you know me, I've done a lot of crazy things, life-threatening things, and learning another language is hands down the hardest thing I've ever done. My brain just cannot retain this stuff, so I have to work around it. I cry every single class, almost. Like, it's a story. I've talked about it a lot. But here's where the, here's where the point of this comes in. We got here this afternoon, and so in, originally I was closer to these kids because um, Anthony didn't have much experience with kids and I noticed that he would just kind of default to not doing anything because he didn't know what to do. Whereas I have a ton of experience with kids. I have two nieces, um, but I also worked with kids. You know, I worked, but I, I always loved teenagers the most because I could just, it was like, I don't know if it's my cynicism or just I could, you know, teenagers are much different than small children, right? But I think my training, you know, uh, at the Upright Citizens Brigade in New York for years, like I am, like improv is my background and that's all you do with kids. Kids and, and people with Alzheimer's. It was really beneficial when my dad had Alzheimer's, just improvise everything, go with the flow, just, with, you know, no, um, no clear path for where this whole thing is going. We just, you know, in the moment, right? And so because of my improv background, because of working with kids from the ages, I used to teach kids between three and six how to ski. I used to teach in the outdoor wilderness, canoeing, climbing, all this stuff to kids between the ages of like seven to seniors in high school. I did this for a really long time. I was also a substitute teacher in New York. Um, kids, 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 kids. I have a lot of experience with kids. So I was pretty confident with kids. And with these kids being young and language not being like super important, although for safety it is. So like, I never wanted to be left alone with them because if there's a safety thing, I don't want, <laughs> can't, you need, like, you know what I mean? I would never babysit them by myself um, until I was super confident in my fluency. But I was closer to um, the oldest 
for a while because you know he spoke the language of play more than just like language language right so i would just like i mean and i put in the effort to just play and be fun and whatever it doesn't matter if we can't you know speak everything like understand everything whereas anthony because he didn't have experience with kids he was like i used to be especially with small kids i, I was terrified of babies people used to joke like don't let melanie hold the baby um and i actually think that a lot of my what <laughs> I think he's so happy here. <laughs> um, okay. I think a lot of my issues with small children um, stems from that being um, the age where I experienced my first like serious trauma. <laughs> like I've talked about this. And so I was very uncomfortable with kids that age. Very uncomfortable. I also, because of I, I, I've been learning to gentle parent myself. And that has actually made me much better at dealing with children because the voice in my head is so mean to me that and then of course I had less patience with especially really small kids, you know, two year olds, y'all know how two and three year olds, it's like, wow, like you literally have a death wish. That's all you want to do is die and make everything complicated and hard, <laughs> but they're so cute and fun. So you, everyone, you just tolerate it, right? So anyway, Anthony didn't realize until I pointed it out to him that if he wants a relationship with these kids, he has to go to them. He has to be the one to put in the work. And he really listened to me. You know, and that's one of the things that, one of the things that attracted me most is like, he really respects what I say. He respects feedback. I respect his feedback. That's how we help each other low and grow and learn and change. And so I just planted that seed. I was like, look, you're not, you wanna be close to these kids, but you're not going to unless you put in the effort. You have, even if you don't know what to do, just throw yourself into it. You'll figure it out. You'll get better at it with time. And after like a couple of years, he is so good with these kids. They're obsessed with him. Obsessed with him. He's way closer to them than I am because he could speak their language, especially the older one. And so now it's kind of flipped where before I was like a little bit closer to them because of their age and me being like play centric. And now he's actually, they're obsessed with him because he... You know, he always makes the effort. He always thinks of how can I engage them? How can I, you know, and, and it's hard to do that. And so uh, we've kind of swipped, uh, swapped places where, you know, they're just like, you know, tonton, tonton, because it's like, uh, and I'm tata, like tont, tata, tonton, whatever. Um, they're upset, tonton, tonton, tonton. And now I'm kind of in like the background and I went into my self-pity spiral. The same thing that I see a lot of dads do and I've heard dads talk about it. They're jealous of their kids because they're, 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 their wives are closer to the kids because they're more hands-on and they're spending more time with them. There's also like, obviously, you know, if you give birth to this child and are like nursing this child, it was literally inside of you. I understand why a lot of times or most of the time that the, the, the child in the first couple years especially is so close to mom, right? The dad has to make an effort. He has to make an effort to like go to them. And, and, and that's what I learned with my, my nieces first. And then with these kids is that I have to make the effort, even if I don't know what to do, even if I feel stupid, even if it's just easier to just watch them from afar instead of actually engaging. And so even though I knew that today, when we got here, they're all playing with him and obsessed with him and crawling over here. And I started going to self-pity. I feel left out. I don't know what to do. Oh, the language barrier. Blah, and I kind of fell into a shame spiral. And I was like, do I really want to spend this whole weekend being jealous of Anthony's relationship with these kids when I'm just sitting here like feeling sorry for myself because the language, the language, language. So I just kind of like threw myself into it and I played so hard with these kids for like, I mean, you know, if you're an aunt and uncle and you're like the fun aunt or uncle, you, if you know, you know, you are like at 2000%, at, at which is really hard to maintain, by the way. I am exhausted every time I hang, as soon as, every time I show up as aunt, I am so exhausted because I like never rest. I'm like, ah, fun aunts, fun, but man, Aunt Melanie, crazy Aunt Melanie. Like my, my, my niece literally thought I was a teenager until just recently. Cause she just associates like fun, cool people with teenagers. <laughs> I was like, that's the biggest compliment ever. Even though I'm like 45, I'm 46 now, but this is when she said. It. So anyway, threw myself into it. All that's gone now. I'm not jealous of him because I had to make the effort. I could sit there and, and reinforce the story that, oh, they don't love me as much because I'm not French and I don't speak French well enough. And like, this is just how it is. I guess they're going to be closer. And I was like, ah, 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 ah. Sure, I could play the victim here because playing a victim means I don't have to do anything. I don't have to change anything. Or I can make an effort and just try. And it was so easy. It was so easy. And I think a lot of men do what I do when I'm uncomfortable and feel inexperienced is nothing.